Alright, here we go. <clears throat> Time to get started. Hello and welcome to Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. My name is Brendan. This is my show. What's up, guys? And gals. Gang. As it were. It's been going on. <clears throat> Sorry about the late start. Uh, I woke up at like noon. <laughs> my bad. My bad. I don't know, I have a second piece of paper here. Here. Pass that down there. There we go. Alright. So, uh, a couple of things to get out of the way. I have been updating the website. There's another few episodes on there. I'm getting closer to where I want to be, uh, but still not finished. It will get there. But yeah, making progress, and progress is always good. All right. Um, today, we're going to continue working on the short film. Yes, that is what we're going to do. And I already set things up properly so that it will work. Yeah, it's readable. Sweet. Please don't be afraid to remind me to scroll up, because I will probably forget a ton. So when we last left off, we were writing a park bench style uh, FBI agent scene.
I gotta run for a sec. I'll be right back. I'll just throw up a, uh, a BRB on the screen here. Should have done it in a color that wasn't black or white. That'll do. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> BRB. Yeah. I'm back.
Oh god. It showed up for mine. Did it not show up for you? Confused. Uh, yeah, sure thing, buddy. Oh, no, yeah, there is no, um... They, it doesn't, it doesn't, re the Twitch chat doesn't recognize images in line, as far as I know. It's just that, uh, you have permission to post links and not get, uh, blocked. Oh, is that a thing on Hitbox? That's interesting. I think it, I honestly think it's a good thing because I find, because Twitch's volume is, of traffic is so much higher, it's just gonna end up poorly for everyone. <laughs> I'm trying to think of dialogue. I took my allergy meds, but I'm still, uh, I'm still getting uh, into it. <clears throat> it's because I woke up so late. I'm thinking of getting, uh, new peripherals, by the way. It's snowing like mad out there, so I just blame the weather.
He's not wrong. He's not wrong. Uh, food times music. I am working on a short film. But yes. Why, why do I have a weird formatting thing there? That's odd. I don't know, Sam. Sounds kind of pervy to me. You should sue him for libel, Robin. You should sue him for libel.
So let's see. Why did it set that up like that? Well, that's interesting. And super useful. <laughs> and not what I was looking for at all. All right. Would that be part of, like, uh, if you lost, that would be part of your punishment? You have to transcribe the court case? Kind of like writing lines on a blackboard? You got a job transcribing legal cases? That's awesome. I mean, I know it's not the most fun thing in the world, but that sounds like a legit thing. <laughs> I actually know some people who do that. Uh, one, a girl I used to work with, uh, her entire family does that. So she used to do that on the side when she needed extra money. Exactly. I like that stuff. Well, I don't like that stuff, but it it's a legit it's a legitimately interesting freelance job. <laughs> So right now I'm thinking of how I want to end this conversation because I feel like it's gone on for too long. Uh, the conversation in the script, I mean. <laughs> uh, not 
you guys in chat. Um, and I want it to be some sort of business trip in which you would stream while away. I'm just trying to think of like what's a good way of doing that for the character without just being like, oh yeah, TwitchCon is this weekend, I should go there, or something like that. Because I'm not really feeling that. Feels a little forced, in my opinion. I just want to end all conversation. I don't want anyone to talk ever. We should just all float around in silence and never say anything. Eventually we will be able to read each other's thoughts so we won't ever have to say anything. That'd be great. But it'd be terrible because we'd be able to read each other's thoughts. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Exactly, Robin. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like, that's what I'm trying to figure out is what what triggers the next scene. Yeah, that's that's exactly you're you're on the same wavelength as me where I don't want to do that. Well, that's also a good question. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't really plan out this thing before I started it. And yes, I will reveal the secret. It is clones. Yeah, no, you're totally right. I can just skip and, and bridge it after. I just don't know what the next scene is. Which is a problem. Yes, and you're completely correct. You can't meander in films. In fact, I feel like this conversation, this entire conversation they're having, sounds a lot more to me like uh, a play conversation than a film conversation, and it would probably be, have to be mostly cut in the in a rewrite. Um, but yeah, are you asking if two clones make out? Do they do they blow up? Is that what you're asking? I'm pretty sure that's what you're asking. And the answer is I don't know, but if someone makes me a clone, I will find out. The clones came back in time. I feel like that's a different movie. Starring an Austrian dude.
Well, it is a short film, Robin, so I wasn't going to deal with subplot all that much. Um, but yeah. Uh, I do not have one as of yet. So really, what's happened so far, if I scroll up to the beginning, is it's kind of been this, like, in medias res, wake up, and some flashbacks, in this mer scene, which kind of just gets weirder, um, and we kind of cut to uh, an FBI guy in a parking garage, like, running out on the phone, then they meet up. And that's what I've got so far. Are you thinking Quantum Leap? Because, uh... <laughs> I got a Voyager vibe, but now that you mention it, that does sound like Quantum Leap. Yeah, I didn't I didn't write a log line actually. That's what I get for doing things without planning. Exactly. I'm doing one. Uh, when Nathan wakes up in a. Yeah, we're doing a live. Bloody murder scene. <laughs> so a log line is a is a writing technique well is a writing uh, idea of summarizing your story in one sentence it's used primarily in film uh, and for selling films, though it is actually quite useful in novels. And I've seen a lot of novel places recently, like a lot of articles online uh, about novelists doing that in order to, to better focus what they're trying to do. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, um, it's part of an elevator pitch but it's not necessarily an entire elevator pitch. But yeah, you could, you could describe it as such.
Let's write this on the screen. Uh, no, I have not. Um, in fact, I wasn't even planning on uh, ever revealing that. My problem is uh, right now I'm just coming up with kind of boring log lines of like, he has to escape the others so that he can survive. Well, think about it this way, Johnny. Uh, if you start having clone scenes, then you have to have uh, green screens and multiple takes and stuff to shoot those clone scenes. So if you can do it without actually showing clone scenes, then that's good. Like I said last time, I mean, budget isn't the only consideration you should be thinking about. Like, you shouldn't have to focus on that or anything. But it does help to think about it a little bit in terms of what you can and can't do. Ooh, that's also a good question. Hey Willow, what's going on? What part of the human condition am I trying to touch on? Um, in a certain sense, I would say identity. Uh, as do I think most clone uh, stuff really deals with identity it's like you have a degree in film or something yeah it's it's weird how you seem like you might have a degree in something because you totally don't have a degree in film at all no <laughs> For the record, Robin totally has a degree in writing screenplays. Degree, it's a fine arts degree. With this. <laughs> I don't know how they actually specify it anymore. It's a uh, it's a Bachelor of Fine Arts in uh, film screenwriting, right? Yeah, so clone, I, f I, 
I am I am of the opinion that clone uh, stories are about identity. Um. <laughs> Let's be honest, Sam. If I had that, I would never use Sotovachi because there's better ways to do it. That entire scene was terrible. It made no sense. Oh, I found those characters after, by the way. I was flipping through it yesterday. And uh, those characters I didn't know, they were... Uh, they were introduced, but they weren't introduced properly, so I totally skipped miss it. <laughs> It was weird. Hey, Mikel. What's going on? It's been ages. How's school? What are you up to? Identity. Um... Yeah, no, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm thinking. Oh, yeah? That was from uh, your Valve internship, right? That's so legit. No, Rob, uh, I was thinking more like, uh, yes, please elaborate, uh, Miguel, please elaborate. But yeah, um, I was thinking more of like that you need to be special, not, not that you need to be special, but like. How do you identify yourself when someone's trying to be you? And not escape slave clones. I am not writing Logan's Run. Or the island, I guess. The new clone version of Logan's Run. I know. I was thinking of the island. Because the island is Logan's run with clones, basically. Have I ever? Yes, yes I have. I have seen Logan's run. Well, I've seen half of Logan's run. Because that's all I got through before I had to return the video. Uh, no, we aren't, Johnny, but that is a good question as well. Why him?
And I suspect the answer to why him is... That would actually be really legit, Sam. You should do that. Put it up on your blog. Nice. That's awesome, Miguel. Yeah, man, meeting indie game developers is super sick. Uh, I did it um, this year when I met up with Jonah. We went to that game developer party thing, and talking to those guys about a ton of stuff was awesome. Uh, there's all kinds of cool ideas going around and just interesting stuff. I like it a lot. It's all good, Robin. I appreciate it.
Another another great question. I don't actually know. I was thinking that they were trying to replace him uh, so that they would have me uh, more media controls, m more control on the media. And as an internet personality, that would be a thing. No, he's not a clone. I'm saying they were making clones to replace him. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Well, I mean, in, in my opinion, secret societies are kind of like this weird circular thing where, you know, they do things in order to increase their power and to prevent people from finding out about them. <laughs> well we're gonna go a uh, quick clone cycle like artificial aging Clones probably made to spec, so they make them when they need them, more than just making them a ton. I am not sure if they transfer memories, or if it's some kind of genetic memory, uh, but I will suggest the possibility that the Nathan who talks to London is not necessarily the original Nathan. Sure, I mean, that totally makes sense. It's just one of those things where, like, I don't think how it's done super matters, but I could be wrong. Ah uh, yes, the infamous Westworld. I didn't see that movie.
I'm not sure about the new guy question, Robin. Um, well, you can't replace people with just other people. By replace, I don't mean like, um, <laughs> Well, that's kind of a loaded question, Ronnie. Because they are right to ask those questions. I mean, I don't always have the answer, and I don't always think the answer is important, but they are right to ask those questions because you can inform so much of the story world with, with those questions like that. And you'd be surprised what you can pack into a short film. Because I'm, well, okay, so this is what I was, I was going to get clarified before I got distracted. Because when I'm talking about replacement, I'm not talking about, like, putting a new person in their job. I mean, they're replacing their, them in their entire life. Where, where disappearing them would be too suspicious. Right? But it does bring you back to the, the kind of the question of, you know, genetic memory, right? Or transferring memories. Like, if you transfer the memory, would he be able to fit in exactly the same way as the original? <laughs> that's a very good question Sam and it does kind of lead back to that idea of identity right where you know if he's not the first iteration of clones but the clones are keep going back to the same type of behavior where they need to be replaced then what does that say about identity? Though then you do kind of run into the problem of um, the ship of Theseus. Theseus, sorry. You do kind of run into the Star Wars problem of why does that clone break or why does that soldier break the... Uh, sorry, soldier. Why does Finn break the programming? You know, how come they can't fix it?
He gets PSD, PTSD. I could see it. Well, Finn isn't a clone. He's a orphan kid who's been brainwashed, but whatever. I mean, it's not super important. It brings up the question of Dark World, right? I don't know how many people here have seen Dark World, but it's a great film. Uh, was a big inspiration on The Matrix. One of the few big inspirations on The Matrix, including they used the opening, uh, they used one of the sets for The Dark World to film The Matrix on. Yeah, that's established. Um, they describe that in the film itself. That the, uh, Oh god, what's her name? Red Dawn? Is that what they're called? Yes, I mean Dark City. Sorry, not Dark World. Dark City. First order, right. God, man. Having trouble remembering things today. Dark City is great. And speaking of Finn, uh, I can't pronounce his name, goddamn. Uh, the actor who plays Finn is in a great British indie film called Attack the Block uh, about an alien invasion. It's so good. If you haven't seen it, you should. What is his quest? Well, primarily his quest is to not die. Um, that's the first part. But that's not all of it. I wouldn't say it is, Sam. I wouldn't say it is at all. <laughs> well, one of the primary, th primary things is the more people are aware of where he is and what he's doing, the less likely or the harder it is to replace him without people noticing. Right?
Yeah, totally. Well, and that's what I was thinking, was like, since he's kind of being portrayed as a Twitch streamer, right? Then we just need to figure out a way to get him on the road and streaming so people know that he's on the road and can see him without... No, he is internet famous. Which is the entire reason why he wants they want to replace him in the first place, right? Because having someone who is internet famous can influence other people. And that's paramount to a group who's all about control. My problem, well, I guess my problem is not that there isn't enough conflict, but that the conflict is just kind of boring, <laughs> which I suppose could be interpreted as not enough conflict. This is why, boys and girls, we plan things before we start things. problem is a giant plot hole. Well, what else is new? Very good question, Sam. It's a very good question. I am a little bit confused though. What is my plot hole? <laughs> Well, I was thinking it was more of a, like, if he wasn't at home, then it's harder for them to find him.
but he needs to be visible because if he's not visible, then they could just put someone in his house and stream, and then he would be effectively replaced without doing anything, you know? True, but it's physically impossible to stream forever. <laughs> he is a human being. He does need sleep. And to eat and stuff like that. Well, that is an interesting question. As much as Speed was supposedly a good movie, I haven't seen it. <laughs> Don't know if 80 miles per hour is the solution here. No, they're still there. I'm trying not to be too annoying with it.
Oh, I'm aware, Robin. I am. I'm very aware. That's weird. It's my turn to derail the stream. I'm going to take a uh, 10 minute break here. Uh, probably five. We'll see. No less than five, no more than 10. Somewhere in the middle. All right. It's break time. I'll see you all in a little bit. <laughs> 